The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up on Life Today, Bible teacher Beth Moore breaks down the miracle of freedom that is only found in Jesus Christ. We know we're free when, when we face an obstacle, it may be hard, we may cry our eyes out, it may be, we may work up a sweat, we may scrape our knees, but when we face an obstacle, we climb over it. It means you're persistent. It means that the devil can knock you down, but he cannot keep you down. something that I've never done before. I'm James Robinson and Betty, my wife, and I welcome you to life today. We received uh, recently a, a, just a gift. It was kind of a, a little bit of an odd number, but it was a very large gift. Uh, it was $82,841. And it was part of a, a, a precious lady's estate who lived here in the state of Texas. Betty, she started helping us. Dorothy started helping us in 1977. She was very faithful in her prayers and her support. She had given $71,439. And in one moment, she gave more than she gave in a lifetime to a ministry she obviously loved. Uh, to all of Dorothy's family, we want you to know how much that means to us. But the thing I'd like to point out is, here was someone in supporting a ministry that they felt like really extended the hands of Jesus. She gave more in her passing than she did while she was here. She just gave a percentage uh, of what she had. Thank you, Lord. And I just say to some of you, why don't you just pray? Uh, you know, Betty and I are more 72 years old. She said, you don't have to tell me how old I am <laughs> because she just looks so much younger, but I want you to know. I, uh, uh, we've been together a long time and we really want to leave behind in every way we can a, a blessing and you think about that and thank all of you for praying for us. Uh, Beth Moore, you're about to hear, she and her husband are wonderful supporters. They're Living Proof Ministries has. And we just thank all of you. And here we are Wednesdays in the Word, which Beth helped inspire and, and launch. Would you welcome Beth Moore? <laughs> we don't have a full life because we won't be inconvenienced enough. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't have any friends because we'd have to do something with them. <laughs> God forbid we might have to do something for them, you know? Like, so I'm like, let's stay on Facebook because they're not stopping by. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? And we just like... We have convenienced our way out of full lives. Uh, that was F, and that was for the word what? Oh. All right, then what do we got next? Oh. All right, the word relentless. If you're tuning in with us just in the last couple of minutes, we are building an acrostic of the word free because we're trying to figure out how would I know if I'm living in freedom or not? Because freedom is going to be no sin or deceit having dominion over me, but I need a little help. What does that look like? Well, F starts for full, R for relentless. And here, this one's easy to tell you. It means you just won't quit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It means you just keep getting up. And I've just got to draw your attention. There is this awesome part in Acts chapter 14. I'm just going to read it to you because Paul is the perfect example. Acts 14, 19 and 20. Just listen to this. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. Now, because they dragged the dead out of the city. So, I mean, they stoned him. To death, they thought. And so they just drag his body 
out of the city. They lay it there. Well, it says when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city. And on the next day, he went on with Barnabas to Derby. What in heaven's <laughs> holy name has happened there? I mean, what in the world? Like they stoned him to death, they thought. He's laying there. The believers come. They all gather around. Next thing we know, I mean, just picture this because he's just like laying there like dead, dead, <laughs> looking dead, just looking dead. And then suddenly he just starts twitching and opening his eyes. And maybe he said to him, what are y'all looking at? <laughs> and up he gets. Who does that? Who does that? But he was relentless. He was relentless. He was unstoppable. It means, listen, this is how you know because you know you're in a stronghold. You know you are not free if the enemy has talked you into sitting down, shrinking back, stepping back in your faith. You've quit serving anybody because somebody you've got an offense at somebody and uh, you've just got, you've just let an obstacle sit you down and, um, and uh, you've shut up. All of those things are indicators that something's up, that the enemy has been at work. Because let me tell you something. We know we're free when, when we face an obstacle. It may be hard. We may cry our eyes out. It may be, we may work up a sweat. We may scrape our knees. But when we face an obstacle, we climb over it. It means you're persistent. It means that the devil can knock you down, but he cannot keep you down. Can I hear from somebody in the house today? He cannot keep you down. He can shut your mouth, but he cannot keep it shut. You see, the devil has no keeping power. I need somebody to hear me say it today. The devil has no keeping power. If he kills you, he can't even keep you dead. Do you, Jesus will resurrect you from the dead and you'll be in glory with him. If that's the worst the, the enemy's got, he doesn't even have the ability to keep you dead. If he killed you, if he killed you, that is relentless. Anybody know what that next word was? Okay, this is my favorite one, my favorite one. All right, we are building an acrostic of the word free. So far, so far we have got the word that uh, begins with F. What is it? Full. It's full. The word R, relentless. relentless. And then we've got our first E of the two, and the E is what? Electric. Now, I have chosen the word electric very much on purpose because... I could have gone with energetic or empowered. Both of those would be absolutely true, but here's how I feel about it. I think those words have lost their edge in our English language. Anybody? I mean, like if, if somebody just says, well, we're really empowered, because you can have like women's and men's empowerment gatherings all over the world that have nothing whatsoever to do with Jesus. I'm not knocking that. I mean, you, we can go if we want to. But I'm saying, well, even though it's the same word, even though it talks about the energy of the Holy Spirit at the very end of Colossians chapter 1, that we be energized by the Holy Spirit, even though it talks about power and being empowered over and over again, I'm just saying, I want for a moment to try to come up with a word that would sort of shock our systems in enough, uh, in enough ways to realize we're talking about something different than what they're doing out there without Jesus. Can somebody go with me there? I, I want you to just think this through with me uh, because um, I'm not sure that I have anything more important to bring to this series than what God really laid on my heart about this whole idea of power. We are meant to live powerful lives. I need someone to hear that. We are meant to live powerful lives, lives packed with divine power. I can give you verse after verse. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, we have divine power to tear down strongholds. 2 Peter 1, 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Ephesians 6, 10, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and I want to show you something there. This is just huge. For a number of us, I'm hoping that, that many of you are brand new, but for a number of us, we are very, very familiar with the scripture that says in Ephesians chapter 3, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or think. Many of us know that part. We'll say it to one another. May he do more than you could ask or think. Lord, come and do more than you ask or think. But you know what? We hardly ever get to the rest of that verse. And it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Listen to what it says. It says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or think, 
according to the power at work within us. Listen, I want somebody to get this. I want somebody to get this because this was such a revelation to me that it got hold of my heart and it's not let go yet. Listen carefully. There are so many things God wants to do. Hey, I believe God performs wonder after wonder. Mir I still believe God performs miracles all over the place. I, God can do absolutely anything, but I promise you this side of the cross, the resurrection, and the ascension. The biggest works he wants to do, those things that are more than we could ever ask or imagine, he wants to do inside of humans like us. It's happening in you. There's nothing that testifies. People, if there was a, 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 a creative miracle out there, do you know what people would do? They would come up with a scientific reason why it happened. But something crazy happens when something is more than we could ask or think in you, in you, that it happens in a human, in a human. One thing for it to happen out there, but he will do more than you could ask or think in you, in you. Is that huge to anybody? Yeah. Because that right there, that is a deal breaker. Here, here's what I've come to say to you. Um, do you know that according to 2 Timothy 3, 5, that power is so important. It was meant to be such a demonstration of salvation and us being in Christ that 2 Timothy 3, 5 literally talks about people who have the appearance of godliness but deny its power and it says have nothing to do with them. Anybody getting that with me? That there are all sorts. I mean, I have all manner of, um, we're all, all manner of appearance of godliness, but there's no power. There's no, that's how much power was meant to be, a mark of a believer. Listen, divine power is seldom imperceptible. I need somebody to stay with me here because um, have you ever tried, I know, I know, have you ever tried a vitamin supplement, anybody, yeah. and gone, uh, you know what? I think I feel a little better. <laughs> anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe I do. Maybe I do, like start drinking a kind of smoothie or something, and you're thinking to yourself, huh, maybe I am, maybe this is working. Maybe I am a little more energetic. That is not how divine power works. <laughs> no, no. That's not how power made perfect in weakness goes. If all you're getting from Jesus is what you could get from your energy bar at your convenience store. Something is wrong. If, if the power in our lives is what could be explained by our supplements, can some, I need to know if anybody's getting a word with me. <laughs> If it could be explained by our supplements for crying out loud, maybe that's not it. Maybe that is not it. Here's what I've come to tell you. We are walking away from the throne too soon. Yeah. I, I, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Listen, I just experienced this this week. I, I feel like it was exactly why the Lord let me experience it, so I would come and say it to you, because I've been praying so hard for this series. Lord, this, this material is important to me. I can't think of many things I'd want to testify more than the, uh, on than the freedom of Christ. Lord, I am asking you. I don't want to go, Lord, I've got tons of notes on breaking free, tons of notes. I'm asking you that I would not have to go to those notes. I love those things. I can testify out of them. I believe those things, but I'm asking you, would you give me a fresh word for this series? Would you get, you're fully capable of giving me a fresh word for this series. Well, I was getting a few, you know, little, little things, little things, and I was trying to be thankful for them. <laughs> then I was all like, nah. -uh. You know, I just, I was on a walk with him and I said, you know what, Lord, I, I've asked you for power. I've asked you for the anointing for this. And you know what? I'm like getting a two and your word says I can get a 10. You know, word says I can. So what I'm doing, Lord, I was walking right on our, we live out in the woods. I was walking right and I'm talking out loud. I don't know what my neighbors thought, but I'm going like, I want my other eight. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, I'm going to tell you something. You, listen, do you know what? I did not feel like he was insulted. I felt like he thought, come on, girl. Come on. Come on. I'm looking for somebody to come back and say, wait a second. That didn't, that didn't seem like divine power to me. That seemed like me on a supplement. <laughs> that just seemed like me taking fiber. That didn't... <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? No, 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 Lord, we're 
aren't you too easily satisfied? Listen, when that woman was pressing through the crowd when Jesus was going to, right, to get that little girl before she died, that little 12 year old and that woman's pressing through the crowd and he stops and goes, whoa, who touched me? Because I, I perceive that power went out from me. Listen, that woman had grabbed that tassel of that rope. That woman had grabbed a lightning bolt is what I'm going to tell you. Now, I don't mean that literally, but I'm just saying the reason why I want to use the word electric is because I want you to understand that compared to the energy and empowerment that the world could give us and that our workout could give us and that our supplements could give us and our smoothies could give us, this is electricity. This yeah, is like right. putting your yeah. finger into a light socket. Yeah. That is the difference. Yeah. That is the, that's what I've come to say. Okay. <laughs> We got one more word and we close the series. Anybody remember what it was? Effective. 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 We got four words going because we're building an acrostic of the word free so we can do a little checklist. I am, is my, does my life have fullness? I, am I pretty relentless? I mean, does he knock me down and I get back up? Because if he knocks me down, I'm talking about the enemy, and I don't get back up, somehow something's gluing me down and I've got a stronghold. And then we looked at the word electric. In other words, I've got some empowerment in me. You've got empowerment in you that comes from God himself. And lastly, effective. Listen, listen, very basic definition of effective out of Merriam-Webster's producing a desired effect. Listen, your works are meant to work. Your giftedness is meant to be a gift to people. Your, listen, listen, your faith is meant to move mountains. Your tree is meant to bear much fruit. You will know a tree by its fruit, not a tree by the sign that says tree. <laughs> we cannot wear our fish on our shirt and think that that, he didn't say you will know them by their fish on their shirt. <laughs> you will know them by the, how many crosses they have on their wall at home. That's not what he said. You will know a tree by its fruit. Your words were meant to bless, full, relentless, electric, effective. That is not Christian philosophy. That is Christian reality. That is what Christ gave his life and overcame the grave to give us. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we want it. We're just coming back saying we want it. We want it. This is freedom, not sinlessness, not perfection, but it is very much, Lord, a full life, it very much means I may be knocked down and I may have the breath knocked out of me, but I am in Jesus' name and by the power of your spirit going to get right back up. I, Lord, I am and they are meant to be empowered by divine power, mighty in you. And Lord, we are indeed meant to be effective. Would you activate this kind of freedom? Not in our philosophy in our reality, in your glorious and holy Son's name. Amen. 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 Wow. Beth, you say things so well, and I know you agree. Lord, I just pray that all the seeds that Beth has sown during this time will bring forth fruit. Freedom, faithfulness, Christ-likeness. In Jesus' name. We want you to look in at a situation that as much as anything we do and our viewers do uh, is uh, important. You're, you're going to see a mother who lost seven children because she couldn't get a cup of clean water for her children. We can change that. I want you to watch very prayerfully, but no, we can change this. She moved so slowly. No, she hardly moved at all. And no tears fell because that well had run dry.
While no picture of health, Rowan has been drained of life. The kind of life found in your role as a mother. Death came. It took from Rowan. But then it took again and again and again. I don't know I don't know what I In this heat, the average person can survive only a few days without water. And though this water might extend the life, it eventually takes it especially children, because their immune systems are too weak for that bite. Trauma has taken its toll. But because the water which took her children is still their only source, Rowan knows that unless something is done to provide clean water, at any moment, she could lose all that remains. Lord, heal her broken heart. Let us together be the solution her heart cries out for. In Jesus' name, we can give her hope. Betty, when you see that, and you're such a loving mother and grandmother, what goes on in your heart? Wow. <laughs> it's hard to express what you might feel as you hear her story. I can't even imagine the pain and the hurt that she, and the sadness that she feels. And to know that possibly she could lose the rest of her 12 children, that already seven gone. The, the hurt, she says, I feel, I think she feels so dry and so lonely inside. We want to change that for her because you see, there could be a difference made to where she doesn't lose any more children if we can get the clean water to them in time. We can drill those water wells. We can be a part of showing her that someone, especially God, loves her and he cares about her children, and he wants to provide through us. Let's be that vessel that God uses. Let's reach out and join hands together, and let's drill the water wells for the children. You know, we're praying that God will heal our land and our hearts, and I really do believe that God uses us as witnesses of his witnesses of who he is and his nature. And what love Jesus expressed to us to give us life. We have an opportunity to literally save children like the ones she lost and those she's praying to be able to keep. We are together the miracle that woman's heart longs for. Right now, we're in the process of drilling 500 water wells. We have to have the resources to complete the goal. We've located the places. We've had the missionaries tell us, we do have an issue. We have to add another drilling rig. And that rig is $380,000, which means to drill the 500 wells, and there are 4,800 each, and we drill them one well at a time. There are individuals like you and couples, sometimes a small business or a church or a Bible study group will drill a well. Many times, a person will say, well, I can't give that, but I can give 1,200 and I'll pray three join me. You give 2,400, pray another joins you. Most of the support though comes from people who give $48. That drills wells for 10 people for the rest of their life. So when you give to drill a well or a part of a well, you're making a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of those people's lives. Would you right now go to lifetoday.org, take your bank card and make the gift God put on your heart? Would you do that? Or would you dial the number and use that card like a check? If you write a check, make it to life, but tell us you're mailing it. And then keep this in mind, because I mean, this is big. 380,000, I found myself praying, God, let some people make a large gift. M maybe 50 or 100,000 or 10,000. 
I believe there are many who can give a thousand. You know what you can do. We've got the goal. The people have the need. We have the answer. We are actually a part of the answer. The answer to the prayer of that woman, to the heart cry and need of so many. Lifetoday.org or dial that number. Thank you for making the gift. We have some gifts to send you to express our gratitude and help you in your spiritual life. Thanks for responding. Every day, children are forced to make a dreadful choice. Drink polluted water filled with deadly disease or die from thirst. No child should ever be faced with this decision. The good news is there is a solution. Mission Water for Life is one of the most proven demonstrations of God's love today. Suffering can end because clean water changes everything. With your gift today, you can help drill 500 water wells in remote villages in over 15 different nations. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five people. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10 and $144 will help provide fresh water for 30 people for a lifetime. Additionally, just over $378,000 is needed to replace an old and failing drilling rig in Africa. Please consider an additional gift of $100 or more to get a desperately needed new rig in place as soon as possible. With your gift, we'll send you The Stream, a powerful new book by James Robison that charts a clear path for your personal revival and a spiritual revolution. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Promises of God coffee mugs. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our Majesty Bronze Sculpture. Please call, write, or make your gift online. From the bottom of our heart, we say thank you for giving more than a cup of water. In so many instances, a well of water. And remember, we need a drilling rig. Uh, $380,000. Isn't it interesting, Betty, that I referenced the gift? And that, uh, that actually is the 80000 you might mm -hmm. say, of That's that. Right. So That's now right. we need people to step up and do what you can. The book, the stream, we got a lot to pray about. I'm, I'll make you a promise. I think it's from the shepherd's heart, from the father's heart. Five years, one a week, asking God to give me a word very concise, very clear, how we're to pray, what must be corrected. In other words, repentance applied. We'll send the book to say thanks. Why don't you go online and get a copy for several friends? Encourage your pastor to encourage the church to do it. All right? Thank all of you for being with us, and thank you for watching Life Today. Day is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.